this is William Bell and welcome to allthingsfulfilled.com and we have another study that we're going to be doing from the clipboard and on this study or in this study we're going to be talking about was the second coming of Christ in 70 AD and the reason we are discussing this is because we had an article that was written by a good brother that suggested some things uh, to uh, counter our teaching on the fact that Jesus' return occurred within 70 AD. So we want to examine these. These are from a gentleman by the name of Ben Vick Jr., Ben F. Vick Jr., uh, who preaches for the Shelby Road Church of Christ in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, he sought to answer uh, the second coming of Christ having occurred in 70 AD by using the word but in Matthew 24 and verse 36. And so what we want to do is examine that along with several of the arguments that he makes in his, uh, in his uh, article on the informer. And of course, uh, I'll put a link down below where you can check out his article to verify the things that we're saying concerning it are accurate. We don't want to misrepresent him in any way. We have no ill will concerning him, uh, love him as a brother, and uh, want to respect uh, his point of view, but at the same time, uh, point out that it is uh, absolutely incorrect when it comes down to what the Bible says about the subject of the second coming. Now, what he's done, when he looks at Matthew 24 and verse 36, which is the scripture that says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, um, or no man knows, and but my Father only who is in heaven, uh, as one of the text states. Uh, but at any rate, when we look at that text, one thing that we want to do is try to understand how Jesus uses the word but in that context so that we do not make it teach something that it does not. Now, um, Vic's approach to the text is that it is a dividing um, line. In other words, that it separates the previous section of Matthew 24, which is verses 1 through 34, and relates it to the destruction of Jerusalem, Whereas the second part, starting in verse 36, refers to an, an alleged future return of Christ. But is that the accurate or appropriate way to view this chapter? In other words, what he does is he has two comings. One coming occurs in 70 AD. The other coming occurs uh, at some time in the future. And so we take issue with that. We're suggest suggesting to you that Matthew 24 teaches one single coming. As a matter of fact, Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 are just one continuous harmonious context and do not teach uh, two different comings, one in 70 AD and one in the future. All, both uh, of the sections refer to uh, the same coming and we're going to uh, discuss that uh, as we um, proceed. Now, in order for this argument to be true, a person would have to know, in other words, Jesus would have had to know that the second coming, which is alleged for section number two, would not have occurred before 70 AD. In other words, he would have had to have known that the second coming absolutely could not have occurred within the first century generation. Uh, how else could he have predicted with certainty that the destruction of Jerusalem would occur? In other words, that the first section Matthew 24, 1 through 34, would occur before that generation passed away. If, in other words, the second coming, what people allege to be the second coming, uh, if that event would have occurred before 70 AD, it would negate, have negated Jesus' prophecy that these events would occur in 70 AD. You see, Vic agrees and understands that a coming of Christ occurred in 70 AD, that Jesus predicted it would occur, and that it was going to happen before that generation passed away. Well, if you accept that as a premise, if you accept that as true, how then could you say that it was possible that the second coming, this alleged future second coming, would occur before that? Because if it occurred before, any time within that first century generation, it would have been impossible for the destruction of Jerusalem to occur. And that negates the fact that Jesus knew when the destruction of Jerusalem would occur. And so 
rather than our taking a view that he knew the time of the destruction of Jerusalem, we're suggesting to you that Jesus did not at the time that he was on earth, at the time that he uttered the prophecy, when he was in his humanity and in terms of having been incarnated, he did not know the day and the hour of the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, let's talk about that a little bit further. We have no clues in the text of a precise day and hour for the destruction of Jerusalem. In fact, what we have is the um, uncertainty of the time of the destruction of Jerusalem. For example, if you look in Matthew 24 and the verses 3, and, and by the way, just think about all of the signs that Jesus had given prior to verse 34. Prior to getting to verse 36, he had told them, here are signs, there are rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. He was still in that section that was before verse 34, and therefore describing the destruction of Jerusalem. He didn't give them a specific day and the hour. In Matthew 24 and verse 20, he says that they were to pray that their flight would not be in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Now, if Jesus knew that the destruction of, of Jerusalem was going to occur within a certain day and hour, why did he tell the disciples to pray that their flight not be in the winter or on the Sabbath day? Even when he talks about the abomination of desolation appearing where it ought not. He says, when you see that, then you flee. In other words, they didn't have any more specific information than when they actually saw the abomination of desolation, uh, when they saw the sign of the Roman armies coming toward the city, that's the only evidence they had. And they didn't get that until they were way later on after Jesus had uttered this prophecy. So he didn't give them anything specific regarding the day and the hour. Uh, in other words, why would he tell them not in the winter or on the Sabbath day. First and foremost, that would be cruel on the Lord's part if he knew the day and hour of the destruction of Jerusalem and didn't tell the disciples at that time. I mean, wouldn't that be cruel? When you think about Amos chapter 3 and the verse seven, verses 7, the Bible says, Surely the Lord does nothing. The Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants. Now, we're going to show you later on in this series of studies that Jesus did, in fact, give some more precise information regarding the destruction of Jerusalem. But it's very evident that at the time that he uttered the prophecy, he did not know the day and the hour. Pray that your flight not be in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Why didn't he tell them specifically, it's not going to be on the Sabbath? Why didn't he specifically say, it's not going to be in the winter? He didn't know at the time that he uttered that. And so, you know, if you think about today, even in some of the fighting that's been going on in Gaza, when uh, bombs are dropped, they have given, in some cases before the situation escalated and deteriorated to the point where it is today, they had given some warning before they struck a particular building letting them know when it was going to occur to try to give them a few seconds, maybe a, a day or so or a few hours to move away from that particular target that they were going to strike. Wouldn't it be cruel of God where his own people were subject to being destroyed that he would not tell them? If you go back and look at the Old Testament, you will see where God gave sufficient warning to people before he brought judgment upon them. And it was only those who ignored him that they didn't take heed and they didn't get the message. And we'll demonstrate that in some upcoming videos. I hope you got the point from this particular video that the point of the day and the hour being known at the time Jesus was on earth. And let me say just a few more things about that. You see, it's one thing to not know something at one time, but that doesn't mean that you won't know it at a later time. While Jesus was in his humanity, at the time he uttered the prophecy,
he did not know the day and the hour. He said his father knew it only. That just simply means God had not yet revealed it to him. Why should we think that's um, beyond the, um, uh, you know, beyond reason and rationale? There were things that Jesus taught concerning the Holy Spirit where he said the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth and he will show you things to come, which means that there were some things that Jesus had not yet revealed to his apostles that would be revealed to them later by the Holy Spirit. So he was in essence telling them, I haven't revealed everything to you. There were even some things he said to them, you cannot bear them now. So it's not uncommon that Jesus had information that he didn't reveal to his apostles at the time, but that he would reveal to them later on through the Holy Spirit. And if that's the case, there most certainly were things that the Father had within his own power that he could have revealed later on as well. We'll give you some specific examples of this as we proceed in the video at this point. We hope that you uh, have enjoyed the message that we presented to you and I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you leave us a comment and we hope that you'll leave a decent comment. Um, so that we can make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to see what you have to say about the subject. And we encourage you to visit us on our website at www.allthingsfulfilled.com. Until next time, this is William Bell saying, have a very, very pleasant day.